What's going on guys? Welcome back to another retro repaint video. Today I'm bringing you a brand new retro repaint, one that I have not done yet on the channel. And uh, the subject today is going to be the uh, electronic Kenner Jurassic Park Velociraptor. And this is going to be a really, really easy repaint. There is no airbrush required. In fact, I won't even be using the airbrush in this video. I'm going to be doing everything by hand uh, just to kind of show you guys uh, how you can actually achieve this same retro repaint on your figure. Uh, so the um, color scheme on this guy is really basic and the Raptor that I used uh, is the new Camp Cretaceous uh, Velociraptor here, mainly because the skin tone on that Raptor is very, very similar to the one on the Kenner figure. And I like to, if I can, play off the factory plastic. If I don't have to repaint the entire body, uh, that's even better because it will help with being able to move it around and not have to worry about paint scraping off. So if you've painted this particular mold before, you know that these uh, shoulder joints here are very problematic. Uh, you have to do a lot of sanding and trimming and stuff, and it's just sort of a pain. So the reason I'm using this Raptor is that I don't have to worry about painting those joints. So I'm gonna leave the body color just the way that it is, and I'm going to just paint over the brown stripes on it just to get it down close enough to match the factory plastic like this right here. So I did use my airbrush with some yellow ochre. Uh, off camera just to get this figure prepped but if you don't have you know an airbrush uh, don't worry about it I'm actually going to show you the colors that you're going to need uh, to uh, achieve a close enough match to this figure uh, depending on if you're going to actually going to paint just this figure here or if you're going to use an attack pack whatever you got either way these colors will work uh, perfectly for this so you want to take some uh, folk art uh, moon yellow and mix it with some nutmeg brown to get sort of a yellow ochre. I went to Walmart to kind of look to see if I could find a yellow ochre and I could not find one there. So you may be able to find one where you are, where you buy your paint and stuff at, but you wanna take some of the spiced carrot orange and mix it into that yellow and nutmeg color. Uh, to kind of orange it out a little bit I guess if that's a word or a new term you want to kind of give it a little orange hint but not too much and if it gets too dark you can actually just put in a little bit of the uh, khaki in there to mix it around and kind of play around with the color until you get a nice close enough match to that skin tone um, if you're going to just be painting uh, you know a raptor from scratch um, it doesn't really matter, but to get it close enough to match the plastic on the Camp Cretaceous Raptor, you want to kind of get it close enough to, so you can paint over the brown stripes. Uh, that way it kind of blends in with the plastic. So next up is going to be the red on the back. Now the red is going to be uh, barnyard red. And if you can see here, I actually took a little drop of it and I painted it on the back of this Raptor and it is a very, very close match. So there was no mixing required here. You can just grab some of that barn red uh, apple barrel paint and uh, straight out of the pot, thin it down a little bit. Uh, next color is going to be lime tree green for the eyeball. And then we're going to use some of this dark granite gray color for the claws and some black for the slit in the eyeball. And then for the underbelly, a light gray or a white color uh, will work just fine. And uh, But that's pretty much all the colors that you're gonna need to do this repaint. It's a very simple repaint. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over and start on the stripes since the figure is already uh, basically the body color is ready to go so I don't have to worry about that I'm not gonna spend too much time on the stripes here since it's pretty straightforward if you have the original Kenner figure on hand you can use that as reference or you can find a bunch of pictures on Google if you need it or you can just uh, screenshot uh, some of the images at the end of the video when I show you sort of the finished product a um, little area right here on the back of the neck is another problematic area that uh, I don't even like to paint because the paint is just going to scrape off that joint. So I'm going to paint around it and not even worry about uh, painting the little uh, hinge there where it moves its neck up and down. So uh, just thinning that red paint down to get it on the figure. It's going to take a couple of coats because the barnyard red doesn't really want to cover very well. And it, uh, if you put it on too thick, it will turn out chalky. But uh, now I'm going to um, stop for a second on the red stripes and I want to do the underbelly side. And uh, the underbelly on here is this kind of 
whitish gray color and I'm actually going to use wicker white instead of the light gray. I actually found it in my basket of paint that I have and it's a closer match so it's a full cart a wicker white but I'm sure that any sort of uh, white would probably do but you want to dry brush it on and you want to dry brush it on very lightly. Uh, you want to get as much paint off the brush as you can and do several thin coats of it just to sort of build that white up so it doesn't have a chalky appearance. Fortunately, this is sort of a satin white, so it won't be as chalky as a matte, but uh, you just want to kind of build up that white underbelly a little bit. Now, I would usually use the airbrush on this part, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it without it. So now we're going to move on now that the underbelly is done, and we're going to finish the red stripes on the legs. Now, what you want to do for that is you want to get the red paint, and you want to sort of paint an edge, a band, all around the legs. And then once you get that done, you can go back in and add your stripes on the legs. Uh, the Kenner figure, depending on which one, I've got three different ones here, and each one of them has a different number of stripes. So I'm going to do three stripes on the back part of the leg and five stripes on the front to uh, match the one that I have, um, but it's totally up to you. So uh, finishing touches on this guy because we're pretty much done. We're going to paint the eyeball lime tree green to uh, match the Kenner one. Very nice vibrant uh, green color. I love this uh, lime tree green. I use it a lot for green eyes. And then we'll take a little bit of black, hold our breath, and paint the little tiny black slits in the green eye. And then we're going to finish things off by painting the claws with that dark granite gray do the uh, hand claws as well as the uh, claws on the feet and uh, this guy is pretty much done I'm gonna give him a little coat of matte varnish to uh, lock in that paint that I put on so it doesn't uh, scrape off or anything and then we'll go take some pictures over in the photo booth so I appreciate you all sticking around and watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found the information provided useful and it has helped inspire your next retro repaint if it has remember to tag me over on Instagram at my new page name the Jurassic Park compound and use the hashtag retro repaints because I always love to see what you guys can come up with for more Jurassic related content you know where to find me links will be in the description box below you guys take care, and I'll see you in the next video.